Hi guys, my name is Hayo David and I am the creative director at Odd Art Studio. I am going to be giving you a walkthrough of how we created this diamond studded dress. Just before I go ahead, I would like you to please subscribe to our channel for visual fashion tutorials and more walkthrough videos. This virtual gown was made using Clothe 3D, Maya, Substance Painter and After Effects. The final render of the clothes was done in Maya's default render engine, Arnold. So most of this work was done using Clothe 3D. So those who have not heard about Clothe 3D, Clothe 3D is a 3D virtual fashion software used for designing, texturing and animating realistic looking virtual clothes. Now let's open Clothe 3D and bring in the avatar that we'll be working with. So this is a DAS 3D avatar that I downloaded from the internet. Clothe 3D has its default avatars that you can work with. Next thing I'll be doing now is that I'm going to be creating the clothing patterns using one of the 3D pattern creation tools called the Polygon tool. So the way you create patterns in Clo 3D is that you simply draw out the pattern in your 2D window then it gets replicated in your 3D window. So by the right side you have your 3D window, by the left side you have your 3D window. So I'm just going to speed up the clothes pattern creation process so we don't spend too much time in this session of the video. But if you actually want to learn how to create clothing pieces from scratch in Clothe 3D then you should subscribe to our channel because very soon we'll be releasing some tutorials on how you can make clothes in Clothe 3D. So what I'm doing at this point is sewing my clothes together using my segment sewing tool. So after sewing, you simulate to get the clothes to drape on the avatar's body. I am going to give the clothes a darker color so that I can see it properly on the avatar's body. Now let's create the sleeves of the clothes using a rectangle. For the other clothing pieces, I'm simply going to import them into Clothe 3D since I've already made them before. So here we have the collar. Next we have the skirt. Then we have the clothing layer on top of the skirt. Lastly we have the cape at the back of the garment. 
So one thing I would like to talk about is how I got this keep playing backwards. So on a normal instance, when you create something like this, you usually have the keep fall towards the avatar body. But now you can see that there is a sudden force pushing the keep backwards. So I was able to achieve this using a tool in Clotary called the Wind Controller Tool. So this tool allow wind to blow on your clothes depending on the direction that the blue arrow is being set. By the right side, you see the exact settings I have used. You can use the settings or you can also play around the wind controller tool to get your desired results. So the challenge with using the wind controller tool is that it applies wind to all your clothes pieces. When in some instances, you just want to apply the wind effect to one part of your clothes. So what I did in this instance was that I deactivated other parts of the clothes and just allowed it to apply on the wings or on the cape. Then for the final animation, I animated the cape differently from the other parts of the clothes so that I can apply the wind controller to just the cape. The next thing I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to be applying colors and textures in Clotary D. Later in the video, we are going to be doing the final texturing using Substance Painter. Now let's look at how these shiny diamonds were created. So the diamonds were created in Clotary D and I'm going to show you how I did that now. While the texture of the diamond was created in Autodesk Maya. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my button creation tool to create buttons all over the upper part of the clothes. These buttons will later be turned to diamonds. So having selected my button tool, I'm going to be creating my first button by simply right clicking on my clothing piece on the part of the cloth where I want the button to be. Next, you want to make sure you put off the collision effect of the button. Change the size of the button by reducing the button's width. And now you can see it is much more smaller. Now let's change the button shape to one that reflects like, like diamond. So I'm going to open the shape option and choose this particular button called snap revert 08 you can see we have this shape now reflecting on our 3d view so i'm going to reduce the size again and uh, one thing you can always do is that you can use your select or move button tool to move your button around on your clothes now to copy and paste the button i'm going to right click to bring out this dialog box select copy then I'm going to right click again to bring paste. Now instead of just pasting, I'm going to right click one more time. And then I'm going to see this dialog box where I have the interval and number of buttons. So I'm going to put in the interval I want between the buttons. Then I'm going to put in the um, number of buttons I want along the horizontal line. Now I want to duplicate all of those buttons vertically. So while everything is still selected, I'm going to right click and select copy. Then I'm going to click paste. Then just like we did before, I'll right click again. I want to first make sure I position it properly. Then I right click. Then I'm going to put in the um, number of repetition I want along the vertical axis. Once I get the result, I like I press OK. And it brings this, I can just say OK again. and you can see now we have our diamond all over our um, clothing piece 
So one more time, I'm going to reduce the size of the button. Now I'm going to do some further editing by placing buttons in the place they don't exist. So I added some diamonds on the arm regions too. Now that we have the diamonds created all over the upper part of the clothes, the next thing we'll be doing is to give the diamonds some reflections. Of course, what makes diamond diamonds is that beautiful shiny reflection from light hitting it. So I select the diamonds, I change the material type to gem, since that's the closest we have to diamond the clue 3D. And then I open the render view to see what it looks like when rendered. Okay, so um, the thing with Clo 3D is that I wasn't getting a good a good result. And apparently this is the closest we have to diamond material. So I don't know, maybe there is some other sort of editing you can do to get a better result. I wasn't just getting the shininess that I wanted. I even went ahead to change from gem to glass to see maybe I would get something you know better too, but this was what I got while I used glass. But I wasn't too bothered about the result I was getting in Clo 3D since I was going to be using Arnold Render for the um, final render. I knew I was going to be able to get a really nice diamond uh, material in Arnold by just selecting it from one of Arnold's default materials. Now let's talk about animation. So if we are working with a Clo 3D avatar, we would simply be able to apply one of Clo 3D's work animation to the avatar. But since we are not working with Clo 3D's avatar, we are going to need to import our own avatar's animation. This avatar is a Dust 3D avatar. So I was able to generate the animation from Dust 3D. So I already had the avatar's work cycle animation imported from Dust 3D into Autodex Maya. So all I needed to do was to export that animation into Clo 3D as an Alembic file. I would then create the clothes animation in Clo 3D using this work Alembic. So now I am going to delete the avatar in Clo 3D so that I can import the avatar's work cycle Alembic. I also want to make sure that I attach all pins to the avatar body before I apply animation. So we have a lot of clothing pieces and this is going to be really really heavy for Clo 3D to animate especially because of the um, large number of diamonds we have. So what I did was that I animated each clothes piece individually then I took all of them to Maya and put them together again in one scene. So I'm deleting all clothing pieces aside from the shirt. This will allow me to animate the shirt alone. But before you go ahead and delete, you want to make sure that you have you have the file with your complete clothes set saved. So then you are going to save another file where you are just going to be you know animating the shirt. You are going to have another file where you are just going to be animating the skirt. You have another file where you are just going to be animating the cape. Now let's apply the animation to the clothes. So I'm going to go to the animation windows. Next, I'm going to click on the record button so that the clothes animation can start. Recording a clothes animation in Clo 3D takes time. But once the recording is done, you can now play back your animation at the normal speed. 
So what I've done here is that I have put off the visibility of the avatar so we can see just the clothes walking alone. So I'm going to be applying this same process to other parts of the clothes. I want to make sure that after each clothes animation, I export the clothes animation as an alembic. So I go to file, I go to export, then I go to as a alembic ogawa and then give the file my desired name now let's remember that we are going to be joining all of the clothing pieces together in maya so something you should note is that for clothing pieces like the cape i am going to be attaching it to the skirt and shirt alembic animation instead of the avatar's body alembic animation and this is going to allow for proper collision between the cape and the skirt and top of the clothes the next thing I'm going to be doing is importing all the exported clothes Alembic into Maya simply by selecting them and dropping them in Maya. In case you are using other 3D software like Blender or Cinema 4D, you can select your Alembic and still import them into this software for editing, just like OBG or FBX files. Now all our clothes Alembic files have been imported into the same scene in Maya. You can now see our clothes animation run smoothly. The next thing we are going to be doing is that we are going to be adding textures to our gown. Now when you look at the gown, you will notice that there are a lot of interesting textures, especially on the skirt. The skirt texture was created in Substance Painter. However, before you can take any 3D object to Substance Painter, or even give it a proper texture, you will need to have a UV map for that 3D object. So a UV map is the flat surface representation of a 3D model. At the right side of our screen, we can see the UV maps of our clothes patterns. So the beautiful thing about Clothe 3D is that whenever you export a clothes pattern from Clothe 3D as an Alembic, it gets exported with the UV map. So you don't need to start creating the UV map from scratch, you just need to select the clothes and you see that the UV map has been created automatically. What you just need to do is to arrange the UV map in your UV space. So I've arranged my UV maps and this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to select all of the clothing pieces and give it the green color of the gown. Next, I'm going to select the skirt piece and give it a different material too before I export it to Substance Painter for texturing. Now I select the skirt and export it as an OBJ for texturing in Substance Painter. Going to be opening Substance Painter, which is a really great software for texturing 3D object. Now let's bring in the skirt we just exported from Maya. Now I'm going to make my camera view an orthographic view. Perfect. So this is the texture we would be creating in Substance Painter. Now let's go ahead and recreate this. I have the different parts of the skirt on separate layers and this is based on how I arrange my UVs in Maya. To start texturing the front part of my skirt, I'm going to add a few layers. Then I'm going to change the color of the few layer to green. That's the color of our skirt. I click on OK. I'm going to reduce the reflectivity of my skirt by taking up the roughness value. I can see we have the skirt less shiny. Now let's add the fabric material to make the clothes look more realistic. So I'm going to add this fabric. And I'm going to put off the color. 
Next, I'm going to see how I can scale the tiny bump so that it can um, be much smaller than it is right now. Okay, so this looks much better. You can see we have this really tiny, tiny um, bobs giving the clothes a more realistic feel. So to create the floral patterns on the skirt, what I'm going to do first is that I am going to bring in a golden material from Substance Painter Material Library. Next, I'm going to add the black marks. Then add a few to that black marks. With the few, I'll be able to control what part of the gold material that I want to show using a texture. Now I am going to open the fill and bring in a grayscale scale texture to control the part of the gold material that shows. I'm going to go to my alpha shelf and bring in a grayscale scale floral pattern that I imported into Substance Painter earlier on. Now we have the gold floral pattern on our gown. So you can either import your own grayscale image or use one from the alpha chef in Substance Painter. Now I'll scale my floral pattern to get my desired size. Next, I'm going to copy all the layers on this part of the skirt and place it on other part of the skirt. Using Substance Painter Render Engine called Iri, we can have a render view of our skirt. This looks good. Now let's export the textures we have created in Substance Painter so we can use it in Maya. We are back to Maya now. Let us bring in the textures we created in Substance Painter. Next, I'll select the clothing piece on top of the skirt and give it a transparent material. Now, let's see how we can make our diamonds visible on the garment. First, I am going to select all the diamonds in the UV window. After selecting the diamonds, I am going to assign a new material to them. The material I will be applying is AI standard surface. After applying the material, the next thing that I am going to do is that I am going to go to the presets. Okay, first I change the name. Next, I will go to the material preset and change it to diamond. This material and preset would only be available if you are working with Arnold. The diamond material has been applied but would only be visible in our render view. I'm going to add some light to the scene and then render it so that we can feel our diamonds on the clothes. I have added an area light. The directional light and the sky dome light. Now let's render and see what we get in the render view. The diamonds are now visible on our gown. When the gown is in motion, the diamond reflections will be more interesting. Next, let's look at how I attached the flowers and the butterfly wings to the clothes. For the purpose of explanation, I am going to be adding just one butterfly. The objects attached to the clothes are 3D OBG or FBX files that I was able to download from the internet for free. To download the butterfly OBG, I am going to go to my search engine and press free butterfly OBG. You can download from any of these 3D model websites. 
but I'm going to be downloading from CG Trader. Feel free to scroll around till you get your desired 3D OBJ. I'm going to select this particular one and I'm going to click on download. After downloading, you import your OBJ into Maya. Go to file, import, then you bring in your OBJ. So I have my downloaded OBJ in my scene here. I've done a little bit of editing to make it look better. So to attach a 3D object to your clothes, what you simply need to do is that you select your clothes, then select a vertex, also known as point, on your clothes. Next, under your constraint, attach a rivet to the selected point. Once you attach a rivet, you see that you are, a pin has been created. The next thing you do is that you select your 3D OBJ and place it under your pin or parent it to your pin. Now, our 3D OBJ has been placed under our pin, which is attached to our clothes. When we play the cloth animation now, you will see that the 3D OBJ follows the cloth. So this is how I attach the butterfly wings and the flowers to the cloth. So next thing is that I bring in my light again and then add my desired camera angles. Lastly, I adjust my render settings and then export for final composition in After Effects. So I used After Effects to composite and arrange the sequence of the video. So the falling leaves in the background were created in After Effects using CC Particle World. I was able to do this by watching a video by Chi Coded Dragon called Falling Sakura Petals Tutorial. So this is my workflow at Odazi Studio for creating this diamond studded gown. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button and also if you would like to see more videos like this or more tutorials on Clothe 3D, kindly subscribe to this channel. Thank you.